Today I'm going to be talking about the most controversial operator in C++, that being the comma operator. The comma operator works as such. First we evaluate the left expression, the expression to the left of the comma operator, then the expression to the right of the comma operator. Lastly, we return the result of that expression from the right, so the result of the right expression. We have a function here, sum, and we have two calls to sum. Commas can also be used as separators in some contexts, such as function argument lists. Do not confuse the use of the comma as a separator with that of it as an operator. The two uses are completely different. Now I know while this might be benign to the seasoned C++ developer or anybody with some background in C++, but it's important to keep in mind. Let's take a look at two examples. As you can see here, we call sum twice. At first, we pass 1 as x and 2 as y. That's quite straightforward, the result is 3. But now we do so in a different manner. What we do is we pass in 1, 2 as the x parameter and 3 is the y parameter. What happens here, because the 1 and 2 are in brackets with a comma separated, is that the 1 is evaluated first, the 2 is then evaluated, and the 1 is discarded in favor of the return value of 2, which is 2. So the result of this is that 2 is the x value, 3 is the y value, and 5 is returned from sum. Understanding these two basic principles, let's take a look at some examples to test our knowledge about the comma operator. Alright, so this should be easy. Take a look at the following example. Here we declare three variables, a, b, and c. Can you guess what b is initialized to? b is initialized to 1. While the example is trivial to the C++ developer, it should strike a chord with people that are new to the language. I just finished saying that any time a comma operator is introduced outside list initializations or function parameter lists, it has a defined behavior. That being to evaluate what's on the left, and then what's on the right, and return what's on the right. Given this, the C++ newcomer would understandably believe that B is initialized to zero. But that isn't the case. Above and beyond the aforementioned properties of the comma operator, we must also consider its precedence. This one is easy. The comma operator has the lowest precedence amongst all operators. That means that in this example, 1 is assigned to B before C is even initialized. Let's take a look at another example. What about this? It is a simple 2D array. Indexing into this array should be easy. Well, if you're coming from a language like C Sharp, you'll be disappointed. With the two square brackets, the comma operator evaluates the left side. There is nothing to evaluate, it's a 1. Then it discards a result, evaluating the right side and returning the result, that being 1. This would return a pointer to the address of the second element in the array, as opposed to the last element in the second element in the array, that being 4. Here's a while loop, a do while loop to be, in, to be more specific. This looks simple enough. If we generate 10,000 random numbers, we should expect that around half of the numbers we generate would qualify to terminate the while loop, right? Not so fast. A newcomer to C++ may forget that a comma is not a math semantic, but rather an operator. This mistake can be deadly, especially in this example. Remember that the comma operator has the lowest precedence, and so the expression in the while loop is evaluated as such. The left-hand side evaluates to a Boolean result. That being, is x less than 5? Then what's on the right of the comma is evaluated. That being 100. And lastly, 100 is returned. 100 is then implicitly converted to a Boolean. Given that an integer other than 0 will implicitly convert to true in a Boolean context, the following do while loop runs forever. To correct this, what somebody would have to do to delineate that this number is greater than 999 and has four digits would be to use a single quote instead of a comma. Let's take a look at our last example before we get into a use case. Take a look at this simple example. We set a to 1 and b to 2. Have a look at this ternary operator and see whether you can infer what a and b will evaluate to correctly. 
Remember that the comma operator has the lowest precedence. In this case, the comma operator acts as the terminator to the ternary. All right, well, is there any use case for this controversial operator? Well, I believe there is one use case that would make sense under certain conditions, albeit I'd still discourage it because it isn't as clear as it can be. Let's take a look at this example. We all know that naming things is annoying. Sometimes we would, we would be perfectly content with leaving things unnamed. Have a look at this lock. We've named it guard. Did guard need to be named here? Does it provide us with anything useful? Not really. The only reason we name it is that if we didn't name it, the lock guard would just spawn a temporary. It would lock and unlock all before the variable x is even incremented. What we can actually do here is use the comma operator. All these tricks are taking advantage of the fact that we are spawning a temporary created on an expression that will live until the end of the full expression. The interesting thing here is that we can use the comma operator to join two expressions to form a full one. It doesn't terminate the full expression. What goes on here is that a temporary lock is created, it locks, x is incremented, and then following ray principles, what happens is that this temporary is destroyed and the lock guard is unlocked. While this is possible, I wouldn't recommend it. Just give the lock guard a bloody name and get over it. Thank you for watching the video guys. If you would like to join the Church of Coding Jesus, there is a link in the description box below to our Discord. I also provide career mentoring and resume review services. A link is in the description box below. And if you'd like to tithe to the Church of Coding Jesus, I'm sure you can guess where the link for that is as well. But to be frank, the best way to help me and to support this channel would be to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to hear the sermons of the Church of Coding Jesus first. Cheers guys.